How to build the Black Gates Twin Steam Engine Part 5, plugging the redundant holes in the port blocks. In order to create steamways between the inlets and outlets, there have to be some cross drillings to the ports that are on the port face, otherwise it would be impossible to get steam from the inlet and outlets to the cylinders. And now I have to plug up these drillings because it's not going to work if all the steam leaks out of the end of these. I'm going to do that with the threaded brass rod provided with the kit and some Loctite 542 to seal it. And I'm using my Proxon motor tool in its bench holder to reprofile the ends as I cut the brass rod off with a pair of side cutters. This is a very simple job with a few warnings. No real health and safety warnings on this one. It is important only to screw the rod in for the depth of the metal, not all the way down, otherwise you will block up the internal ports and that would block up the steamways. The best way to do this is to use a pin like you see me doing here, screwing the rod till it traps the pin and then back off the rod until you can pull the pin out. It's also important to do the top ones first, so that when you screw the piece of rod in from the side, it won't go any further in than the end of the original rod which went in from the top. In case you didn't get that, here's the principle again. Using some Loctite 542 to seal the brass rod, the rod is screwed into the pre-threaded hole in the top of the standard until it nips the pin. And when you feel it nip the pin, back off the threaded rod until you can withdraw the pin. That way you know the ports aren't blocked. Then when you put the rod in from the side, again with some Loctite 542, you can just screw the rod up against the original pin that went in from the top. And once again, as I chop off each of the pieces of rod, I reprofile the end using my Proxon grinder. By the time you get to do the bottom part, you know how many turns to give the rod to make it go the full depth of the metal, but not protrude into the steamway. This is very important. The next part of the job is a very careful clean-up of the edges, being very careful that the needle file doesn't slip and scratch the main ports. In this clip, I'm cleaning up the sides of the standard, and this is where the steam inlets and outlets are. You don't have to have a machine tool to do this part of the job, you can use a file like you've just seen me doing. But as I've just turned 66 years old and time is running out fast, I'm using a milling machine, but you really don't have to use a milling machine, you can do it by hand. But I do like to make the job easier. Obviously, health and safety rules do apply when using a milling machine, such as eye protection, and often a breathing mask is a good idea because these metal particles are quite small and I don't think I'd want to breathe them in. How did I set the standards in the correct position in the machine vise? I've used my calibrated eye. Much sighting up and checking and looking at it from different angles seems to put it in the right position. The problem is that the top of these standards are tapered, they're just as they were cast and often castings are tapered so they come out of the moulds. You don't really have to do this job, may I add, if you're thinking, oh, this is getting difficult, I thought it was a kit. Well, it is a self-assembly kit. You need a file and screwdrivers and spanners and things like that. The holes are professionally threaded and they're perfectly square. But I thought I'll just go the extra mile and clean up the edges this way. I want this engine to look good because it's not just a crappy little brass engine. This engine is made from gunmetal. So it's a proper engine which will give years of service, provided I put it together right. What I'm hoping to do with this engine, after I've finished building it, and after I've run it in, I'll rephrase that, after I've played with it for a while, I'm going to put it on my website, up for sale, to the highest bidder. And then I'm going to give all the proceeds that I get from the engine to a charity, a charity called Candle Lighters. And this charity helped to support children with cancer. The address is on the screen at the moment, just check it out if you get time. I'll be mentioning this frequently during the build from now on, because it's not going to take that much longer to finish this engine. What's happening at the moment is the big casting cleanup. The problem with castings is that they are rough castings. As you can see, there are lots of lumps and bumps on this piece of metal, and I'm still carefully removing sharp edges with the needle file, mainly the parts in between the steam ports, just so they look okay. I don't want to see a nasty jagged sharp edge at this point. The trouble is though, the needle file is only doing so much of the work that there are certain places where I can't really get it to be effective. The needle file is okay for the edges, but it's when you go inboard it does get very difficult. So it's time to call in the cavalry in the way of my Proxon motor tool with a diamond burr. And doing it this way is really good, much faster, much more efficient 
and it's making a great job of tidying up the casting. You have to be very careful. One slip in the wrong place with this diamond burr and parts of the casting could be ruined. And the other disadvantage that I can think of is it's making a bit of dust. So once again, apart from eye protection, a breathing mask is the order of the day. I'll speed up the footage so I get through the job a little bit quicker. I'd just like to take this opportunity to say I'm still having problems with people sending me links. On Patreon also. I got one the other day, and I know it was from a very well-meaning viewer. It was showing you how to flatten off the edge of a drill so it doesn't grab metals like brass or gun metal. A while back I was going to make a video showing how to flatten the edge of drills or make them shallower so that they don't dig in, but then I thought, well, I don't want to be responsible for a load of beginners destroying their first set of drill bits. So once again, any links that are sent to me on YouTube or Patreon are automatically in the trash can. I'm sorry about that, but I can only really apply one rule. Links are not allowed, they can be dangerous. That's it for this video, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.